Not on that spot, just that distance. Dr. Arcello? <laughs> All right, well, I think since this is the first time that I have the pleasure of being at JCCA, I will take your mask off. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, we're observing SOPs, we're properly distanced. Uh, Honorable State Minister, thank you so very much for the warm welcome. Lord Mayor, good morning. Executive Director, thank you. Dr. Kello, the Director of Public Health and Environment. I know there are some division town clerks present, our implementing partners, my USAID colleagues, our CDC colleagues, so many other friends, all protocols observed. Thank you, good morning and welcome. I am so very honored to join you today for this important event on urban health and to launch a new grant from the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to the Kampala Capital City Authority to support improved health service delivery. The U.S. Mission has a long and collaborative partnership with KCCA. I think the most obvious, uh, especially to anyone driving along Gaba Road, is the expansion of our facilities for which the support and guidance from KCCA has been essential. Additionally, in 2018, the U.S. Mission sponsored the travel to the United States of a group of Ugandans, including KCCA officials, for training on air quality awareness. The relationships forged there continue today as experts work with KCCA to manage over 50 air monitoring stations, helping to make data-driven decisions about the air quality in the city. And a U.S. environmental scientist just finished working on a platform that will assist KCCA to develop solid waste collection stations, to improve its solid waste management, and prevent pollution and clogging of drainage channels of solid waste. And, and I recently had the pleasure to even share the stage with the executive director for Drop Everything and Read Day, where we promoted the importance of literacy. So based on the success of these initiatives, it only made sense or as we say in the United States, it was a no-brainer to work together to strengthen urban health systems. As you've heard, metropolitan areas all around the world face unique health challenges, including rapid population growth resulting from rural to urban migration, highly mobile populations, and underemployment, especially among the youth. These challenges place a higher disease burden on cities compared to the rest of the country, particularly shown by the higher rate of HIV prevalence. In addition, findings from the National Tuberculosis Prevalence Survey a few years ago revealed that more TB cases are found in urban areas like Kampala due to their high population densities, a critical recipe for disease outbreaks as the current COVID-19 pandemic has shown. In fact, the Kampala metropolitan area has shouldered the great majority of COVID-19 cases and deaths in Uganda. All of us deserve to live long, healthy, and prosperous lives. Recognizing that a healthy population is the foundation of a country's economic success, the majority of U.S. government assistance to Uganda is dedicated to the health sector. At the U.S. Mission, we believe strongly in investing in people. Annually, we invest more than $500 million in Uganda's health sector, helping to address many needs, uh, including assessing health threats, training health workers, strengthening supply chain and laboratory systems, and building up other components of the health sector so that medicines and services can get to those who need them when they need them most. With a focus on controlling Uganda's HIV, AIDS, and TB epidemics through the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR, as you know, our programs also enhance Uganda's capacity to improve motherhood and child sur survival, to prevent and control malaria, to strengthen vaccination programs, and to respond to disease outbreaks, including the current COVID-19 pandemic, all of which significantly impact urban health services. Through the collective work of our agencies, the Department of State, Department of Defense, the U.S. Agency for International Development, the Peace Corps, the National In Institutes of Health, and obviously the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we have partnered with Uganda for more than three decades to improve the health and well-being of people in both of our countries. The grant we are valued at $1,631,562 for just the first year of a five-year award, built on our earlier efforts to strengthen urban health. 
Since 2010, CDC, with resources provided through PEPFAR, has been funding the Infectious Diseases Institute in collaboration with KCCA to implement comprehensive HIV services in six high volume public health facilities and many not for profit facilities and centers of excellence spread across five administrative districts of Kampala. We are supporting improved HIV care and treatment outcomes for patients admitted with advanced HIV disease at Chirudu National Referral Hospital to reduce AIDS deaths. We are extending services to vulnerable groups like adolescent girls and young women through the PEPFAR Dreams Program, which means determined, resilient, educated, AIDS-free, mentored, and safe. And we're supporting key populations like sexual minorities to access non-discriminatory health services, as well as ensuring the incarcerated are supported in HIV TB services under the Uganda Prison Services. I understand that such public facilities under direct KCCA management currently serve close to 40,000 people living with HIV in treatment, in addition to supporting comprehensive HIV prevention activities, such as prevention of mother to child transmission, HIV testing, and safe male circumcision. Additionally, with PEPFAR funding through CDC, uh, the Infectious Disease Institute has also supported KCCA to improve its laboratory system waste management staff capacity. And this capacity has been instrumental in identifying cases of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. However, rapidly increasing urban populations without a matching increase in a number of health facilities has resulted in overcrowding, with an average of 250 to 350 HIV clients receiving services daily in the six KCCA facilities I just mentioned. This translates into long wait times and contributes to high health staff turnover because of burnout. So through this grant, some of the initiatives designed by IDI, such as using private community pharmacies within the city to serve as drug pickup points for stable HIV patients, have greatly reduced overcrowding at facilities. Considering that KCCA has an oversight role of Kampala's health facilities, including private hospitals and clinics, these initiatives will help streamline services in conformity with established standards. Additionally, Uganda has experienced several zoonotic and human pathogen outbreaks in recent years. In Kampala, poor sanitation and crowded conditions have resulted in recurring cholera and typhoid outbreaks. Disease threats aside from HIV and TB, including COVID-19, will be addressed through this new award that will focus on specific interventions to address challenges faced by the urban poor living in Kampala City. The project aims to improve HIV services for urban dwellers, support integration of benefits from the clinical and preventive health aspects in alignment with the wider KCCA strategic agenda, and strengthen the capacity of the division health teams to plan for, track resources, and respond to the emerging health issues. So I'm pleased to see that division town clerks and those in charge of health facilities are here, as they will be instrumental in mobilization, oversight, and ensuring access to supported health services. I also want to emphasize that PEPFAR's work is guided by three core principles. Accountability through cost-effective programming to maximize the impact of every dollar invested. Transparency by sharing data at all levels of programming. And impact through sustained control of the epidemic to save lives and avert new infections. So I urge you to ensure that health services under this project reach those that need them most, especially the vulnerable and marginalized urban poor. So in closing, I wish to note that Uganda, like many African countries with PEPFAR presence, has experienced challenges and disruptions to its programs due to COVID-19. Ugandans have lived through two lockdowns with two waves of COVID-19 that saw many healthcare, work, healthcare facilities filled to capacity, a number of deaths attributed to COVID-19, long-term closure of schools, and slow vaccine rollout due in part to delays in getting vaccines into the country, and also vaccine hesitancy in the broader public. Uganda has also lost healthcare workers to this pandemic that leaves health facility staffing, especially in urban areas, stretched. These challenges have impacted and will continue to critically impact HIV, TB, and other health programs, contributing to preventable deaths, the full magnitude of which is still unknown. So as we strengthen our response efforts to COVID-19, we also need to maintain continued delivery of other health services including HIV and TB prevention and care in a strategic and efficient way. 
So I commend all of you for your hard work and perseverance during this unprecedented and incredibly difficult time. And I sincerely hope that this new project renews our efforts and dedication to meeting our common goals. From COVID-19, I am pleased to learn that the U.S. donation to Uganda of more than 1.6 million uh, Pfizer COVID-19 doses that arrived last week is being put to use at 58 vaccination station sites throughout Kampala, including right here. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that no country exists in a vacuum. As President Biden announced last week, the United States is donating 500 million more doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine, COVID vaccine around the globe, bringing the total U.S. commitment of donated doses to 1.1 billion. COVID-19 vaccines are safe, they're effective, and they're one of the most important tools we have in reducing the risk of COVID, including serious illness and death. And they are essential to bringing this pandemic to an end. Um, so I'm so glad to hear that you've gotten the job, and I encourage everyone else who's eligible to take that important step toward protecting your health, the health of your family and your community members, and to get the job as soon as one is available to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have launched this project and uh, let us start. <laughs> 